All right, guys, we are looking at the Weller Portasol. This is a butane soldering iron. Uh, I picked this up on Amazon. I think it was around maybe $50 or so. I can't remember. Uh, this is a butane soldering iron, like I said, uh, made in Ireland, which is kind of interesting. I haven't really seen too many things that were made in Ireland. Uh, down below here, we have the butane fill port. Um, and to fill that, you're going to get your butane, hold it upside down, push it into the slot there, and basically push until it starts coming out. I did not have to use any of the adapters that this uh, butane can came with. Filled up perfectly on its own. Uh, down below, there is an adjustment switch so you can control the temperature of the, of the uh, torch head. On the cap, you'll see that there is a little stepped off portion right here. And what that does is it prevents the gas valve from being pushed on whenever it's in your bag. So once the cap goes on, that's going to lock out this thing if, if the uh, cap stays put. So on the one side, we have the gas valve. On the other side, we have the igniter, which pulls in the opposite direction. So when you want to light this thing, push the gas up. And then you can see right there the uh, flame and then down below turn it up turn it all the way off this unit you cannot take this unit apart and use it as a torch like I think some of the other models do um, you can change out these tips for different uh, thicknesses depending on what you're doing so it's kind of hot right now, but this portion right here does come off. You can change out the piece on there. I, I am able to light this. But it will not stay lit if you're trying to use it like a torch. So I don't think that was a feature that they mentioned. But to put it back together, it's got a little retaining screw right there. You simply thread that into place. Every time I've used it, it's light, lit one click every time. So I'll do a quick soldering demonstration to show you guys how this thing works. Alright, so I'm sure somebody will chime in and say it's the wrong way to do things, but whatever. I've been doing it this way a long time. So what I do is strip the wires back. I'll take and I'll fray the wires out as shown. And then I'll push the wires together in the middle. And then I'll take the wires from there and I'll twist. Generally, I like to put on uh, a little bit of flux before I do that. That way the flux gets everywhere. But you can do it after as long as you apply uh, the correct amount of flux. Melt it in there so it kind of gets over everything before you start soldering. So I've set up a little um, wire on a vise and I will show you guys how the thing actually works. Alright guys, after you got your wires together, this is kind of an extreme... Um, sample here you don't need to strip it back this far but you're gonna want to make sure that your tip is clean so in order to do that light your torch and then uh, they sell these type of uh, Brillo pad cleaner things with it heated you can take it and scrape it off inside of there then I like to flux put flux on it And then you're going to want to use a rosin core solder uh, whenever you're working with electronics. And then you're also going to want to use the correct flux. So normally you would put this on with an acid brush, which I cannot find right now. So put flux on there. Light my torch. You're going to heat from the bottom. 
add solder from the top. And once that wire gets up to the right temperature, solder is just going to start falling in there. So as you can see, it's melting in there now. Try to avoid adding too much solder because you'll end up with a big glob at the bottom of the wire. But if that does happen, you can kind of go back with the torch and smooth things out when you're done. But definitely using the correct um, flux and the correct solder. If the wire is dirty, it will not want to solder very well. So if you're dealing with copper that is actually black from corrosion or um, black from being overheated, it's not going to solder very well. <clears throat> so after you're done with that, don't forget to put your heat shrink on the tube first, seal it up, and you're pretty much good to go. So thanks for watching, guys.